Yes, we are live now. So, hey folks, this is me, Vishwas Nair. I'm the host of this Demo-Ups chat show. A lot of times I've realized one thing, you know what? There's something beyond everything that I'm talking about. Like, you can talk about Kubernetes at one given point of time and you still are migrating to a service which is there for your entire infrastructure. Like you can talk about AKS, you can talk about EKS, but now let's just concentrate about AKS and learn what is Kubernetes infrastructure, which is managed by a cloud service provider. A lot of times I've realized, okay, this is, there are a few changes which are required in the technology, but yet AKS is having its own charm. So let's just learn from it. Let's just start learning everything regarding AKS. So, my primary question is, what is Kubernetes to the world today? And what is it all about when we talk Kubernetes? Um, hi, uh, good evening for um, Prince. So uh, to me, Kubernetes, uh, like it's, it's a bookish language. What it says is it's a, it's a, also called as the K8S because we have eight letters between K and S. So that's what uh, uh, it is, the short form. So uh, it's usually the term Kubernetes came into the picture when we uh, when we were looking for uh, some kind of platform, uh, orchestrated platform that can manage the deployments, um, you know, scale the your systems, uh, scale and upgrade your systems without having an overhead of uh, running multiple uh, applications. So uh, the Kubernetes came into the picture when uh, we were having a transition from uh, a monolithic application to, towards a microservice application. So when Kubernetes uh, was designed, it was designed in a view like, uh, uh, where, because if you see the uh, uh, the monolithic applications, uh, uh, what were mostly on the infrastructure where we have to uh, depend on the, the rack servers, the blade servers, and uh, the bare metal servers. So uh, slowly um, applications started moving from IS to PaaS. And when it was moving to PaaS, uh, so there was a need for you know some platform that could manage uh, that could run uh, a engine that was needed to orchestrate the uh, the application and that application was a huge code so uh, and then they had to be deployed in a VM and then the backpack deployment have to be in a database so now challenge came uh, why not you why we have to deploy all these things in a separate VM VMs like application on a web application or a and the database on a different VM. Why not? We can can't um, you know uh, compress these uh, into a uh, into a image, and that can be deployed into a uh, image, and then it can be deployed to a particular uh, a Docker image or a container. So container is just a uh, what you see is a, is a shape you can imagine, and which is carrying multiple containers under it. So each container represents an application. And now when I talk about application. That application could be web application or and the com combination of database as well. So everything you see uh, we, from from you know uh, managing the VMs and the data centers, from then managing a container and then container the, then container came into the picture. Then it came a Docker Swarm, which was uh, which was evaluated and then uh, came the concept of the containers, Docker containers. So the container is just a uh, um, um, you know. Uh, it contains multiple images or the Docker files and the Docker files. Um, the, the, when we have multiple Docker files, the application Docker file, SQL Docker file, it's a one Docker file where we have uh, the application which is deployed in a Docker file. So when when we deploy that into a, uh, you know, uh, we could provision that uh, and run an application. But when it comes to upscaling and, you know, upscaling and running into the production loads, we needed a orchestration. So now it's not only AKS, guys. It's it's like uh, it was not only AKS which was uh, introduced. There was one couple of more services which are doing similar kind of job with AKS. What what it was? So it was like a, a container instance. So that that's how uh, uh, different options were explored. But this this pertaining topic which which uh, we are focusing right now, it's a Kubernetes. So I think Kubernetes came into the picture much earlier into other cloud platform like AWS. It came into around 2014, I think. And then, um, you know, eventually AKS was introduced in uh, Azure quite late, around 2018. So uh, so that, that's what it evolved basically around um, AWS. 
and prior to aws also it was running as a you know independent tool kubernetes kubernetes can be provisioned in your local machines as well so this is how it was designed to you know orchestrate that platform uh, you know uh, contain multiple containers can be deployed and you know upscale and downscale can happen of the application microservices application so uh, this was there previously also and and yeah uh, the advent the aws was the first to you know adapt this kubernetes but this is the kind of open source platform for you know that's a gist of it for the automating deployment scaling management and all those things yeah yeah you know like kubernetes has a documentary right you know like i'm yeah. not joking it yeah. really has its own documentary it's it's a history like you know yeah. it was a software from borg and omeba which was always there in a google infrastructure and now like you know you know there's an in that documentary which is listed for it you know people really wanted that like because they wanted to know what is going behind that entire kubernetes infrastructure i think well, wait i'll say what I think yesterday uh, I was attending a webinar in React. Okay. Yeah, I think yesterday. Yeah. It's a learnathon which uses the cloud native application and all these things. You know, everything that we are talking about. Yeah. So now let's just talk about it. What is the difference between a self-hosted and a Azure Kate? um self hosted uh, you know what based on based on my experience uh, azure uh, when we talk about uh, since i have worked on more on the azure uh, uh, kubernetes services it's it, it's most on the you know you don't have to really manage anything everything will be controlled by uh, azure platform and not only this we have uh, I, i will show you couple of uh, just ping couple of links where where we can Uh, so it was running previously also like before to azure but the beauty of it is i i learned uh, kubernetes more easily in the uh, azure platform why because azure has a well architectural framework of every damn it service it is not for class simple so Yes, sir. Sorry, what happened? I think we disconnected in between. Yeah, like uh, yeah, this is a live show. Anything can happen. So yeah, network was getting glitchy from my side because okay. they started using the internet. So yes. So self-hosted. Uh, we, I was. We were talking about yeah. We were talking about um, the self-hosted Kubernetes as versus the Azure Kubernetes services. So uh, what I believe is like. Uh, um the aks was you know uh, as it seems from microsoft eks from amazon and then gke is from the google so i think google was the first the kubernetes is was a product of google and then uh, originally uh, the container orchestration platform was 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 derived by google and uh, this was a, a service independent service der- uh, developed by google so google cloud was not uh, you know that much uh, you know uh, Uh, prevalent few years back when kubernetes came into the picture but this was we knew that google has developed this platform this was the only thing which was available but what i like about running uh, kubernetes on the azure is like uh, they have very uh, good well architecture framework where you can uh, you can manage the thing understand the things and how you can do the manage your workloads the node pool uh, and uh, how it will be connected to the uh the container registry and how the po- it will push the image and how will you uh, the this is more you know useful and more uh, using a hub and spoke topology so you can understand more easily with with uh, with uh, uh, azure kubernetes services but this is one but um, you can also learn this from the the kubernetes sites itself but i think based on architecture with azure has to offer uh, you know offers more uh, you know flexibility in terms of understanding the Uh, the things and the workload is being managed by the azure itself like you have to have the networking like azure cni or kubelet where it is managed by azure itself you don't have to bother about uh, anything and deployments can be automated using azure devops but but when you do a self hosted one it's just like you know installing a visual studio or visual studio code in your local system and self hosted is like uh, uh, and then running on a um, 
you know you are managing your upgrades and clusters by your own uh, it won't be taken care by any cloud vendor um, that, that's what i understand by managing self hosted so it's just like uh, you know when you uh, do a uh, you know, devops or any devops platform so there are two kinds of uh, agents like self hosted of the or the cloud vendor uh, hosted like so what happens is self hosted you have to take care of everything like from from deploying the creating the cluster deploying the application upgrading uh, downscaling and um, then making sure availability everything you have to manage yourself what i understand by this self hosted term so self hosted aks is also in the similar way you have to manage everything by yourself and then uh, but in case of um, uh, as you manage kubernetes services uh, you don't have to manage these things recommendations will be in place so, uh, so your your cluster should look like this you should upgrade your cluster to 1.2x version to 1.2xx version so all the recommendations and actions the security features um, the vulnerabilities assessments will be taken care by the, any cloud platform so that's how that's what the difference between the self hosted and uh, a cloud vendor uh, uh, associated kubernetes services so a uh, couple of links are there to to uh, kind of explore why uh, you know why you know with aks and why uh, what is the difference between the uh, other the, the on premise kubernetes services you can run it as a dev, as independent service or a self hosted service versus aks so th these are things which i was um, um, couple of thing links which i was studying upon and um, just before um, coming on to the session and and presenting this one so the, the, this is the uh, links which uh, which i was exploring and uh, and yeah this is uh, i think you can share your screen yeah uh, just hold on um, yeah so let me share my screen yeah so, so yeah i'll put this in the comments share screen sharing screen uh let me know once you are able to see my screen yeah i am able to see your screen so uh baseline architecture uh, pretty much is available for uh, almost uh, um, almost all the things which are uh, there actually so uh, but baseline architecture for you know designing kubernetes uh, on the aks as your uh, this is the the, uh, the you know uh, things which you can follow because i i remember following this in my last organization when we were designing this for a, 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 a data platform so this was uh, this was used pretty much for designing the you know data platform and this is the the you know the repository for managing a baseline cluster so th this is what you can use to uh, design uh, the your you know kubernetes architecture and uh, this is like a baseline architecture which looks good and for implementation implementation perspective also it it offers a very good uh, you know uh, topology network topology which is easy to understand and it's a hub and spoke model so you, you can't expose your expose your you know pods and containers to the public in the you know uh, and everyone is able to access your um, your master nodes and your uh, you know public ip is exposed so it should be controlled like the hub should be exposed to the public and the public internet and the spoke should uh, you know um, decide the key core services which should not be you know uh, publicly exposed that has to go now this has to go through some bastion network right bastion vm has to be placed before these um, the the um, the uh, node pools can be accessed so a bastion vm came into the picture and you can link that bastion vm and and i think uh, um, so this is uh, this is pretty much the Topology in the the architecture, the baseline architecture which which AKS provides is the good good one. So this is what I uh, I had followed in my last organization uh, for the implementation perspective. So uh, it takes care of the security and uh, and uh, you know the the recommendations and uh, managing your workloads and um, uh, and then you know, you can you can bring your own certificates for security and Kubernetes identity. Like who wants to, uh, whom you want to give the access. So this is this is a new feature. This is not a new feature. BYO was already pre uh, presence uh, present in the Microsoft. Like bring your own keys. Like for key vault, we um, in the key vault we have bring your own keys. So bring your own features. Uh, you know these kind of features will be provided by the uh, cloud hosted a managed uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes. Like it could be a Azure managed google managed or a eks uh, amazon managed 
but these features when you go with a uh, you know uh, stand alone kubernetes uh, cluster which you provision sometimes they bring your own uh, things are not available so uh, that that's the main the main difference although i have not provision any uh, self hosted kubernetes for as of now but but this is this is what i feel the major difference would be the other link which i was uh, you know um, was exposing what uh, was uh, this one i think um, uh, let me see the link which i pasted uh, so i think this is the link which i was uh, seeing just coming before to this session so like uh, the the difference between the kubernetes and the uh, and the kubernetes service as i said uh, of of course this is a generic difference but i think self hosted is something which i understand is like hosting in a independent it's you can host your in on premise itself so that's a self hosted you have to manage yourself or the uh, the, the private cloud vendor for example um, any organization private cloud is there so that that cloud vendor has to manage this kubernetes cluster so that's what you call as a self self manage those kubernetes cluster consideration you have to manage yourself you have to tell the private cloud uh, company that these are things which needs to be there no one will recommend but in cloud managed kubernetes instance everything will come from the cloud vendor itself that's the main difference what i feel uh, vishwas yeah yeah no i yeah, i feel that you know because when once we talk about technology which is changing you know it's it's ever changing right you know kubernetes yeah. comes with its own version every time you know you know as ablewag says do not accept the defaults every time you know you, yeah, you should yeah, also yeah. learn about how yeah. you should not accept the defaults which are there in the kubernetes infrastructure which is the entire cncf like you can you can you are really free to do because you it's your money it's your infrastructure you are doing yeah. the cost optimization you are doing everything so windows for containers i wanted to ask you this question because now we have started dotnet right you know we are going gaga about dotnet things like that so windows for containers so what do you feel like what are the potentials of windows for containers and you know like how are we really architecting solutions using the dotnet infrastructure or as the windows windows base images that we can find on our docker images so how are we doing all these kind of deployments right now uh to me if you say um, i am i am I'm really because been uh, associated myself with the uh, microsoft uh, tech technology since last uh, uh, almost 9 years now but but uh, i have worked in linux i uh, i started my job as linux system admin actually what i feel uh, see container uh, when this technology came into the picture container right container docker docker swarm and then containers uh, this was designed uh, first framework which was designed for docker was tested on uh, the linux images the linux operating system images and in fact this was developed because uh, on the kernel of the linux itself uh, why because linux images were much uh, much you know smaller in size than to deploy a windows container than a windows container and um, you know because it uh, first cloud vendor was the amazon which to adopt it so linux was was the first platform which been chosen for the container platform for the container technology so when we talk about this because linux is was a uh, considered as a better os than windows in terms of architecture and uh, you know um, containers take advantage like uh, of the you know the linux kernel features and the uh, small size the sheer small sizes have as compared to the windows uh, images and in terms of vulnerabilities also if you see patch management is there for both uh, linux as well as windows vm but i could see um, it it's easy to remediate a linux uh, linux image um, deployed on containers than on a windows windows images deployed in the containers so uh, so when you say about windows for containers yes i i feel it's it's a good uh, good choice in fact we have now windows uh, windows 2019 and 2022 i think which has came new so from 16 onwards 16 onwards yeah some patches are available so the uh, inbuilt features are coming like you can deploy the container uh, specifically for containers deployment from 2016 onwards windows server 2016 onwards these features containers windows for containers are, are automatically coming with the upgrades uh, first with 19 i'm sure it's available but i have not seen 2022 but um, at least 2019 onwards 16 and 2019 
विंडो सर्वर दिस इज अवेलेबल बिकॉज माइक्रोसॉफ्ट हैड टू इनेबल दीज थिंग्स बिकॉज वेन यू अपग्रेड द विंडो सर्वर दीज द न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज विच नीड्स टू बी देयर सो बट बिकॉज यू नो deploying something it's just like the same thing when you buy a car right when you buy a buy a car and suppose it doesn't have uh, suppose the, uh, the the music systems and it doesn't have uh, you know uh, the the camera um, so uh, fitted or the cng fitted so what happens you try to install from a third party you know systems um, and it the quality might not be you know as comparable to the as which already fitted like the cng fitted cars on something like that so if you put it externally from a third party vendor the durability of that thing uh, would not be sure the guarantee would not be that sure but the company fitted things will also be be you know good one um, good quality it will last longer is a similar way uh, containers for windows for containers i feel uh, uh, when you have those these things in the for example when you try to install these windows for containers in for example when you play why i am talking about windows uh, server uh, uh, you know virtual machines is like because these are the uh, ones which uh, we currently which i have been working with interacting with uh, you know uh, uh, on the migration also uh, so basically after hyper v machines are the instances are there and most of them are hosted on windows server that's why i'm taking example of windows server so when it comes to uh, windows 16 onwards so when you when this features already comes built in or patch with a patch you can you know avail the service then it's almost better in, in terms of security also those uh, security will already be built in but when when you do those things in uh, try to do those things in windows 2012 images and all those things it won't come with that security and the best practices so that, that's what the difference uh, when you uh, run the uh, the containers on the different uh, windows server um, images uh, and, but i think uh, the running windows server images would be uh, on the linux uh, uh, you can go through a couple of uh, the documents which i have been reading upon and the basically before coming again to this session so these are the again you i can share your screen share my screen and then yeah i can share my screen just hold on um, uh, so uh, again i am just sharing my screen um, so this is the uh, this is the you know i'm just sorry um, sure so uh, so this is like uh, the you know different between the linux and the windows containers so this is the best uh, you know uh, not best but i could see uh, at least uh, uh, you know something related document which i have found which is uh, useful other than that you can also find in the you know good articles on the medium as well and uh, this is this is more or less referring to the uh, same article but for windows cont- if you are specifically focus on windows cont- and containers this is what it has to offer like the java dot net python because see mostly we because microsoft or windows containers is because uh, previously windows container were not hosting these many languages this was available in the linux but now with the advent of uh, you know technologies and the the last few few years you can see almost all language are is is there java dot net and it because dot net is based on microsoft so uh, Uh, microsoft had this advantage that they at least have one language uh, like uh, which is proprietary of microsoft so that was dot net uh, that's why you know uh, uh, running workloads for the dot net dot net core uh, you know framework was much easy to run in the container so these are the you know um, languages which which supported java dot net python and node js and then um, um, you can run it from anywhere on premises cloud and the any app monolith or microservices so this is uh, one of the thing which which i have to uh, um, share as a give away of this particular topic which you have asked and this is the other one which uh, can be linked cross uh, link on this one so yeah uh, i think yeah, any any insight if you want to share on this one vishwas i think that's yeah yeah i feel like you know there is always a new need that comes up like yeah, i okay. know for sure tomorrow there is going to be a vulnerability patch that is required that there of can course. be an rc there can be yeah. an rc patch which can be which, which is being bounty out there somewhere down the line i don't know about it i <laughs> yeah, think spy yeah. has their own one db i think they are doing pretty good i think i can share my screen now and i can oh, show yeah sure how to get mm-hmm. the things up and running 
So, yes. So, if you just go for Snike, one BB, yes. And you click on it. Like, you need not have to do anything. Like, let's say you, you want to know something of Coco Parts or else Go or else Red Hat. Let's say CentOS. CentOS is what we mm. maximum use, right? Sometimes. Let's say Seuss. There's nothing wrong in uh, putting a CVE. The CVEs can be in anybody's name. So the CVE can be not just from the CVE portal, but also the CVE can be somewhere from anywhere. Like, let's say that I, I actually give this uh, example for every people. So TensorFlow, uh, four is not there, but like, let's say TensorFlow. So any, any of it, right? You know, let's say if I go to the Python and I have an TensorFlow NPM package. And so there are different different places where they have really told where are these packages coming up from. And, you know, the source can be known. Like, you know, the malicious package is always there. So where is it? What is it all about? And there is obviously a blog written out there on every little thing. Like, if you want to know about supply chain technology and things like that, you can still really get to know that. I think, I think, I think what Snike is doing as one of the most relevant uh, aspect in terms of whatever we are thinking about it's something like can we go and build something beyond our entire comfort zone that we are talking about so this is all high low medium let's say high right denial of service i think this is one of the uh, applications which I had and this came with a custom github commit which was already there like i'm saying github commit was being taken care and it was now being done with all these uh, different packages which we're talking. And I'm saying denial of service, which is there in a backend, backend service of other uh, services that I'm talking about. So in a meanwhile, when I think about different services which are coming out with different patching strategies, different ways to kill that application sometimes, you know, everybody needs to undergo a downtime at one given point of time. You can't say you don't have to go for a downtime because yeah, it's just a piece of code which is written by somebody else and you're just pushing it to the company. Uh, pushing it to the world and you're just going out there. You know, I'm saying enterprise softwares do have their own patching required. Open source do have their own patching required. So it doesn't matter where you're starting. It's always the security that you need to own. So yeah, I think if you have anything to share, I think you can share. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, regarding, I think, um, on, on actually, uh, yeah, so on the you know uh, the what I have seen actually the the deployment patterns uh, deployment mm -hmm. patterns when it comes to you know uh, deploying the um, the things for uh, uh, you know uh, in the production scale. So uh, first of all, uh, what I have seen the uh, basically they are um, when you start with Kubernetes right in an online organization, my past experiences you don't start with a strategy. So that's uh, that, that's uh, you know you just deploy uh, you know provision the uh, you know, just uh, you just uh, you know what you say. Uh, you just create a structure of it, skeleton of it, and then you start deploying the application. This is how truly it happens in the, any organization. Uh, for uh, especially for when you start with a POC, POC of a Kubernetes uh, cluster, you provision the infrastructure, and then uh, you start deploying your application. You open the Docker that um, that I, I'm, I'm telling you my from my real ex real time experience. You start, uh, what you happen, you start uh, searching for that uh, image in the Docker a repository, pull it in your local machine, uh, customize it, and then push it to the container registry. And then um, from container registry, you try to automate uh, using the DevOps pipeline or uh, through the, um, yeah, there's a Docker couple of four or five commands you will run and push that image and then pull that image. Uh, once the image is ready in the ACR, ACR you you push that image from the ACR to the uh, to the Kubernetes cluster, which you have uh, the infrastructure which you have provision. You push that image to uh, this using Azure DevOps. This is how it happens. But when it comes to the production design, since I have been involved mostly on the driving this from the POC things, I'm telling you how it happens. But for the deploying um, in production, it's not a joke. You have to come with a strategy, and then <laughs> there it comes the um, most popular strategies which are used mostly there are two of them they are rolling updates as well but uh, mostly which is follows with kubernetes it's a canary one 
Canary deployments usually goes the deployment strategy with with uh, Kubernetes because in Canary it's an incremental update which happens. The patch which has gone previous in the production it will just apply a uh, uh, you know one more patch, one more secure patch on top of it, or you know uh, that can secure an application. Uh, that's how uh, so Canary deployment usually goes when you de uh, design a production ready strategy for Kubernetes. But then it's not only the um, the Canary one. Uh, you can go with the blue green deployment strategy as well. And then you have one more thing which is called rolling updates in, in Kubernetes, where you uh, uh, there's a third strategy which you can adapt. And each strategy will have its own benefits and all. Uh, but yes, uh, to continue, I think uh, um, I, in my previous sessions, I think I have covered uh, these two deployment strategies in the past. But but containing pertaining to uh, what you say, uh, Kubernetes and own. I think this is what I was uh, reading about. Uh, although, uh, like while while because production ready cluster is not uh, you know um, is not a joke and it's also uh, not that uh, not that complex also as as well. So um, this is uh, uh, one of the you know the basic things which you can start with uh, monitoring the behavior and rolling or roll rollout upgrade that was I was just mentioning. So this is. Uh, this you can all control and it goes well with Canary deployment strategy. But with Blue Green also, if you see this architecture, with Blue Green also, this is like um, uh, when you deploy a new version, it's it's a green one. And with the CI CD, it's a blue which is running. And green one, uh, when you run your uh, push your latest code and then you do a switch over, um, yeah, what you call a slot deployment. Then you switch over the things. Then this green becomes the blue and um, uh, the green uh, and the green which was already tested with the CI/CD pipeline, it becomes the green and it serves to the end users. And the one which was undeployed and which was serving the traffic in the meanwhile, then you know CI/CD comes into the picture to the blue and then it start deploying. So we monitor the behavior with blue green. So in this way, uh, we have to wait also in in between. Like half of the customers will be getting the blue traffic and with the with the you know. Because you will be deploying within a web app, right? And in the web app, we have a concept of uh, 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 slot deployment. Uh, slot, uh, you know, I'm not remembering that stuff now. Slot, I think. Uh, deployment uh, slots only. There are uh, 10 deployment slots. slots. Deployment slots, correct. Yeah. So you, it can swipe internally. That, that's how it goes well with. I like this feature of the blue green. Like, like your 70% traffic is still served by the public, 30% could be your internal organization employees like myself uh, or maybe you Vishwa so and when we are deploying any application so when you don't want to expose all the things to the end customer this is how we can uh, when the production ready cluster is not available you we can uh, some of the traffic which can route to the blue and some of that person is traffic can out the green this is uh, I usually prefer um, you know mentioning this blue green as my one of the one of the favorites one uh, which you can adopt but but for some of the other reason I don't know uh, Maybe uh, this uh, more on the you know Kubernetes, Kubernetes what I've seen, uh, but although I am yet to explore why Canary is more you know predominantly used in Kubernetes. So uh, uh, this is where where I'm I'm still exploring. But to my favorite, if I have to um, go, I will go with a blue green deployment strategy with, with Kubernetes. But but uh, we have we do have I think one of the reason what we have figured out myself. Why do we go with Canary? Because we have a concept of rolling updates and an incremental push. Uh, you don't have to deploy entire th application. You just have to deploy the changes which has been done. But for blue green, it's like a uh, uh, so whole application you have to deploy and you have to convert into green, and they, which you saw in the picture just now. And then uh, that thirty percent internal people will be accessing the application, and testing that whole as a whole. But uh, you know, with the Canary one, you can apply incremental updates. So some updates, suppose if some issues are being caused in those updates, so you can roll out, you can roll back those features, and uh, um, and you know, uh, roll back those features, and um, uh, there also, uh, you know, till that time the customers would be not able to see uh, uh, some uh, technologies there in the Canary one when when the users won't be able to see those, you know. Uh, you know that change which has happened so frequently that uh, suppose the new update is not working well. So, but the end customer won't be able to see. Only some of them would be able to see. So, those 
frequent switching and the incremental updates this is i think why canary is more preferred in kubernetes yeah that that's my that's my view um yeah. but yeah you can uh, yeah. also add here yeah i think yeah customer stories and windows like you know like you you can't really mess out with that without reading that you know i feel like you are just missing out on something you know and i feel like you know it's just an example you know i'm not saying you just have to go to just read a bosh i think this is this is where you get the url just go start reading that but you know when you when you read there are different use cases smart homes using dapper java on uh, java delivery oh. life cycle management using as your iapms i think there was one more on the vehicle safety using this one i think bosh is also famous for their braking systems to be using as your kubernetes service to stream the traffic out there and i oh, think you talked of, okay. yeah yeah they are pretty awesome in that and if you want just go back and go to this link this is a link from nilesh gulay's blue green deployment on kubernetes and an amazing person like an amazing yeah amazing cloud architect like you you can't ah, even mess out without yes. seeing him like of you know, course at one I point agree. of time you would have literally seen him like you should actually uh, of course i agree him. i used to attend his webinars and all yeah he is a uh, yeah like literally to be very frank with you if you are so oh, yeah if you want to design production ready cluster yeah go go watch out for his webinars yeah and that's the same for us there so, so yeah, i think that, yeah i think we are talking about a lot about the popular deployments but like aks so what to be secured in aks like what do you feel should be secured in aks as a customer who is using it as a person who is learning it what should we really learn using it because one fine time when i saw what what are the demos that navin sir would give you know i feel like you know it's something which is very basic but yet we have a lot to be covered in terms of what to be secured in aks so what should be secure in aks uh the basic thing which comes up uh, since um, you know in my current uh, experience which i've done uh, which i've experienced in last year so uh, what happens is again uh, it's again the uh, you know the job which is been done by the uh, cloud managed kubernetes cluster is like we have tools like when we i talk about specifically for azure we have tool like azure defender and all those tools uh, uh we have uh, already uh, provided by the with, with the uh, as your cloud uh, also all, only sentinel and security centers security centers and all monitor as your monitor especially so the the uh, what the first thing is like uh, when I, when i was uh, you know um, working on the production production clusters for the robotics uh, thing robotics environment so um what uh, you know uh, does the vulnerabilities in the images in terms of the base image which which is uh, which is sometimes not updated and when you don't update your base debian based image or any underlying os image it uh, itself exposes a lot of uh, you know vulnerable attacks and uh, um, uh, the vulnerabilities in the image you don't you won't have the latest patches in the images windows uh, windows or linux images which is available so you have to upgrade you keep you have to keep your images updated according to the latest security patches for uh, that is the first thing like and the the ports but the ports where you are trying to expose your containers so you have to you have to have that control like uh, which ports custom and you have to have the custom ports never go with the default ports because that's a vulnerable to the hackers so th th that's a you know some of the things which are which are needed right now um designing the custom ports for your application don't go with the default ports as you said don't uh, it align with the one of the able wang uh, thing is like uh, he what he said is don't go with the defaults it applies in every damn thing of devops right now um, you don't have to go with the defaults the port numbers uh, where your container is, is exposed the the base image which has to be updated the again i will be talking about very fundamentals which i have seen in the production cluster um the images which have been updated and then uh, it comes the uh, the application the application uh, versions uh, for example uh, the where your code is running it has to be updated to uh, have the match with the security because with every patch of the um, of the of the for example node js or the dot net it comes the uh, the the security and uh, security so those things um, as well also have to be uh, kept into the consideration and when it comes to um, 
i think so designing a, a um um you know production ready strategy for kubernetes um, comes with when you uh, design the security security and the application uh, see because you end of the day you are trying to deploy the application in the cluster itself so you have to secure your application and for securing application you have to ensure both the uh, the skeleton where your infrastructure is provision uh, that um, infrastructure remains uh, secure and then your application remains secure you have to take care of your application security as well as the 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 kubernetes as a service as a um, infrastructure also to be provision so you have to there are two um, there there are two things which you have to uh, you know these two things which you have to take care application security it's not uh, only the responsibility of kubernetes you have to have the tools uh, to monitor the uh, like with the show tool which you showed for the um, uh, i think one of the tool which you were show, showing just now so for the application again the developer or the um, uh, the you know the test engineers are is responsible for uh, and even the operational responsible for securing the um, you know uh, uh, the application itself but now when it is deployed to kubernetes it's come become the combined response shared shared military responsibility for every developer operation guy to take care of security of both the application as well as the cluster while it's mostly of all into the operation bucket but still when designing these applications you have to security cannot go beyond um, without security you can't deploy your application so you have to take care of the security of both your application as kubernetes kubernetes alone won't take care of all that because see you have a different tools available for kubernetes for example um, um, grafana and uh, prometheus are there so we have tools now available that take care of both the things application as well as kubernetes security but end of the day uh, uh, what i feel is uh, you have to design a different secure strategy for your application how will you uh, secure your application by by not exposing the ports which are not meant to be exposed and defining a proper data lake rbac all those things or um, uh, spn service principle so you you have to take your application security uh, uh, in a different way um, this is what i feel uh, while my, my, my practical exposure um, uh, yeah, this is what i feel actually uh, the the security expert yeah yeah you know i think i shared one of the customer stories from uh, microsoft you know it's i'm saying matching map matching algorithms and as you observe it okay like, this is the state of the art infrastructure that you can really talk today like you can't mess up with your algorithm you can't mess up with your infrastructure i think what what as your offers is a state of the art security governance and policy like you can't really say that hey you know what i'm just going to mess up with everything and anything that i'm just going to have i think you were explaining by sharing the screen right i don't think yeah so. just hold on uh, yeah i was uh, i have to reshare and uh, share this so this is couple of the topics which uh, again yeah. uh, what when when you designing your cluster this is uh, the uh, you can refer to the docs which are already available on uh, microsoft so like uh, security concepts for the application and the cluster design as i said application and cluster are two different things you have to think care of the security uh, of both the application as well as the cluster where it is being deployed and then is this uh, this uh, you know handy things come into the picture and you can um, uh, adopt these strategies and uh, the nsgs uh, to make use of the network security groups um, uh, for uh, securing your things for the infrastructure itself i think this document specifically talks on the infrastructure part of it but for again for the application i think uh, this has to be a different one i think this is the one for the application like for security and upgrades uh, when your application actually deployed in the cube kubernetes this is how uh, you can enable the threat protection you can uh, uh, defender for containers is available this is one of the things which uh, which will help you in uh, you know defender for overview of microsoft defender for containers you have to enable this service it's a paid one but it's a worth one it will give you a secure score and based on those secure score you can uh, you know manage the you know, this is kind of vulnerabilities yes this is what i was teaching uh, was telling so these kind of vulnerabilities used to come and i have seen these vulnerabilities happening uh, when when it comes to the 
security so th this is where you know you need to enable the defender service which which as your already has to have offer it will take care of both your your cluster health as well as the application health which is deployed in the kubernetes cluster so this is um, this is one of the useful link i, I would say uh, when it comes to the uh, the you know securing your uh, uh, yeah securing your kubernetes cluster so this is one of the links which which uh, i can, you can share and uh, yeah so this is the one i think uh, uh, a useful one which uh, which i have uh, seen and i have used as well so uh, i have enabled because this was not enabled in defender service but then uh, because we were causing issues and we were not able to show the vulnerabilities this is how it will display your your vulnerabilities finding and this is how uh, after your application deployed to the cluster this is how it will monitor both the things your cluster health as well as the application underlying base image health so yeah uh, this is how uh, i worked on this one so this is the correct article which which was implemented in my in my current experience last year yeah yep that's true that's true lot of things change lot of things change in kubernetes lot of things to correct. be unlearned and live learned so so i'm now asking about how does aks scale security across multiple kubernetes clusters so what is it all about when we are scaling across multiple clusters we are strategizing for multiple clusters and thinking about hey where can i really get the best version of the code fitted inside the kubernetes so what is it all about when we are talking about all these kind of uh learning that we are just going behind scaling kubernetes security throughout multiple clusters um so like uh, although like um, see uh, i will be very practical uh, multiple <laughs> working on multiple kubernetes cluster frankly uh, i have not got got that much opportunity as of now but yes uh, uh, like uh, i will try to answer best whatever i can but uh, yeah so when when it comes to deploying uh, you know uh, having an um, you know things uh, which are uh, meant for uh, deploying your image to the multiple kubernetes cluster or multi region cluster you can say when for example you have one kubernetes deployed in the east us one deployed in the in the west europe right so uh, paired region basically so uh, when, when you deploy into the multiple regions and uh, multiple cluster to provide to multiple regions so uh, you have to take care of the basically the design patterns the geographical node patterns available in those zones It, uh, when then we have a concept of aks availability zones which you have to take care when you are deploying because same security patch have to go to one region and then to another region so those things can be managed by uh, uh, kubernetes services that uses availability zones so this is like uh, um, like uh, i think this is overview of like availability zones for the aks cluster and how you can manage and cascade um, the those um, uh, clusters to the Uh, different different zones this is not actually what i'm telling is not actually uh, answers your question but yes uh, like this this covers the deployment strategy which we have to follow when it comes to um, uh, you know deploying to the different regions but necessarily it won't take care of your uh, uh, what you say the security aspect but uh, at least on the deployment strategy wise uh, this would uh, but the baseline architecture for the multi region cluster i think this is the the relevant one which which i have been found again it's it, it's like uh, design patterns i'm not even to comment more on that but yeah we do to my less exposure on this article but yes i found this um, these couple of things which are useful yeah i think you can share the screen yeah yeah let me share my screen yeah just hold on uh i can again share my screen and then yeah so this is uh, this is what i was uh, talking about this is the uh, i think this article which i have found is um, yeah it take years of your you know hub and spoke technology and your uh, different regions which have been been deployed like um, this is uh, the uh, hub and spoke for one region hub and spoke for the second region again when it comes to the when you deploy when you say multi uh, multi cluster obviously i understand this multi cluster is one cluster deployed to one region and second cluster deployed to some other region this is how the typical uh, you know uh, architecture would look like for example for east us you have paired region as east us 2 so 
so these two are the paired regions so where you are have been spoke uh, you know so the, the the it's a basically the question which which you have put in more on the emphasis more on the security uh, ingesting uh, cascading security from one region to another it should pass automatically and this comes under security aspect of kubernetes and this is also comes under when you have uh, you know hands on on deploying aks into multi multi cluster or multi region so the, this is what uh, uh, typical uh, things look like lo looks like and then um, again this is something which is not a new one but i think uh, this requires a, a good amount of exposure into this uh, uh, this is the one of the article which i have pasted i think uh, uh, where you deploy in the multi cluster region and the most relevant one and uh, this is the uh, what you see is the the the, the github manifest for this uh, deploying into the multi region cluster and um, um, of course uh, this is what you can you know follow to uh, achieve this again that's a good one but i i will try to implement i uh, to in my um, in my current organization or while doing a poc on my front this is a very interesting thing for me to explore as well um, while uh, uh, working for this multi region multi uh, cluster so i think these are a couple of things um, which you can follow yeah yeah i think i think to me when i talk about everything that is related to kubernetes you know it's kubernetes is cloud agnostic you know it's no way related to it it's just the aks eks and the tk commands which just keeps changing but like it's still going to be the kubernetes that is going behind an entire architecture its job is to scale up scale down allocate the parts nodes of course nodes parts containers making sure that your entire kubernetes which works on a container environment scales up quicker and it's a it's a new infrastructure that you're trying to add right now so you are now making sure that the communication happens between what do you call from an external internet infrastructure to an internal self hosted infrastructure that's through your aks cluster eks cluster also your self managed hybrid cluster so a lot of things i think i think all of these is fine but the places where you can really start working and worshiping this technology is like i can say somewhere like uh, just go ahead learn about the flaws of this technology just go devopsify that application you know that there's a yaml file now just start building in github actions you get the rbac uh, rbac id tenant id and you you need to really manage your azure credentials properly and i think that secret management that amount of governance and the policy added all together you know that's that's going to give you a lot of edge that's going to give you a lot of edge in learning something new every single day you need not have to complain that hey you know what i'm doing this i'm doing that and i'm not available anywhere no problem man you know there are somebody out there bounty and thing and in dark kubernetes infrastructure they you know ins and outs of the kubernetes they can hack into your infrastructure so patch it up as quick as possible learn about it as quick as possible devopsify the entire process of building this entire infrastructure and just keep learning just keep hustling you know kubernetes is vast the ckd means nothing by the way like your ckd has nothing to do with your yeah. kubernetes security so don't be in a don't no. be in a mindset that ckd is going to give you that security aspect ckd is going to no no ckd is temporary administration perspective it talks about yeah. administration perspective security is a different concept it, it's not uh, like administration on the development i think you guys are working on sonar cube right what is the sonar cube doing in that entire Uh, sonar cube sonar cube uh, when it comes to sonar cube it's used in the pipelines for the static code analysis for the typical um, the dot net asp dot net application which are having as of now in the current architecture we we are not having the asp dot net core uh, we are still working with the asp dot net in the uh, one of our solution but we are uh, upgrading our you know code from asp dot net to asp dot net core so that we can convert our application to micro from monolithic to microservices but when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to the uh, running the, as of now the tools which are used again we have not uh, uh, sonar cube is the uh, you know tools which is been used for the code analysis for the code coverage for uh, uh, the quality profiles again is maintained by the developers like uh, uh, like for this much uh, 
the, the threshold value is like 60%, like it should uh, cover at least the 60% of the code and uh, and the quality profiles like um, are being configured by again, those profiles are being uh, configured by the developers. And uh, we, we are using that tool for kind of, you know, in the, in the build pipelines to uh, to analyze the code, uh, to scan the images, uh, like not that scanning the images, like uh, it's just like uh, in my previous experiences also, we have been using Sonar Cube, uh, for example, for a mobile build application. I'm not talking about the robotic current, robotics one, but for the mobile build application in my last organization, we were using Sonar Cube very effectively in terms of uh, scanning the uh, certificate for Android application, the mobile application, the iOS application. So um, Sonar Cube played a very effective role in terms of the code coverage and uh, those things. But Sonar Cube, uh, especially for Kubernetes, it's not there, but it's general the generic tool which we are been using in the pipelines for the code coverage and the and the quality of the code and uh, the uh, you know uh, the quality gates which have been configured in the, uh, in, the, in, the in the build pipeline so uh, that have been used in the past but uh, yeah but current uh, context to i think uh, with the microservices architecture uh, uh, this is where um, which, which we we need to explore more on that but yes with the asp.net ASP.NET framework architecture, yes, we are using Sonar Cube for the in the in the build pipelines for the you know code scanning and um, code coverage and the you know uh, the we are defining the the ratio based on the mutual agreement with the with the product owners and the developers and uh, uh, the leaders in the business like what, what how the code quality should look like. Um, so the, those are those are things which we are controlling with Sonar Cube. Uh, right now in the pipelines yeah but, it's, a, it's a team it's a yeah. challenge it's a team and it's a challenge you need to accept Correct. it you need to yeah. just scale up your entire application you can't complain that hey you know what it's not my responsibility everybody needs to know the security. <laughs> yeah. that's where technology comes that, that, that's where the shared responsibility matters also come to the picture yeah i think i think past years where sla was being so much evangelized slos and slis are now getting yeah. evangelized right now you know like by the time we think about like something has to happen in an organization by that time we would have lost everything in the in that discussion like kubernetes need not have to have a discussion for two months you know your kubernetes clusters can be deployed using what you call simple github actions as well but you don't have to strategize too much for kubernetes your secrets are safe. It's it's uncompromisable, by the way. Once you keep it as a secret in a secret manager, it's uncompromisable. So there's a different hashing algorithm and things like that. So don't fear. Just do Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Kubernetes. It's going to work. If you learn, if you learn the right way, if you do it the right way, if you deploy it the right way. So yeah. thank you so much, folks. I think thank you so much, Tarun, sir. I think I love calling you, I think, sir. And you know, there are some more guys in this entire series. Like, I just love calling you folks and just now love learning it. So, yeah, I think it, it's a great, it's a great conversation that we had right now. It's a great thing that we just started achieving right now. So hopefully we do something more. Thank you so much, sir. Of course. Thank you. Thanks, Vishwas, for today. Uh, yeah. End the broadcast.